Send this to Abu Dhabi and do not handle with care. <laughs> I'm sorry. Garfield, how many times do I have to tell you, you can't mail Nermal to Abu Dhabi? He wouldn't fit in the fax machine. Besides, Nermal is so cute. In fact, Nermal's just the cutest thing on the entire planet. And I'm so glad he's going to be staying with us for the entire month. Face it, Garfield. In the reality-based world, I am the pinnacle of cute, and the cute ones rule. I have to stay here and see this. What I can't figure out is why any of you watch when he's on the show. Doctors work day and night to get rid of horrible diseases. When will someone find a cure for Nermal? In fact, Nermal's just the cutest thing on the entire planet. <laughs> and I'm so glad he's going to be staying with us for the entire month. You are monitoring our dread enemy, the Orange Cat, General? Yes, and I believe we will soon find his weakness. He seems to hate that which is cute. We must find his weakness. His ability to devour our people is all that prevents us from finally conquering his planet. The secret may lie in this line our spy monitors just captured. In fact, Nermal's just the cutest thing on the entire planet. This normal has a dire effect on the orange one. That is the key. Send in Spumoni! You uh, sent the for me, General. I did. It is time to program the transformation our scientists have engineered. Step into the molecular restabilizer. This will change him into an even cuter version of the normal species, so he can infiltrate the Orange One's home. It will be my honor to go under the submission, the better to keep. Information that will enable my beloved planet of Parma to conquer the Earth. Brilliant! Like this, he will find out how to defeat the Orange One. I can use the molecular restabilizer to transport him to Earth, and later to bring him back as well. I have successfully... <clears throat> I'm not expecting anyone. Oh, you poor little adorable kitten. You look abandoned and hungry. Don't worry, I'll feed you. And boy, you sure are cute. Another cute kitten? Hasn't Nermal made me sick enough? I know you don't like this, Garfield, but he's so cute. In fact, he's even cuter than Nermal. <laughs> what do we need another disgusting cute... cuter than Nermal? Why, oh, this could be, uh, shall we say, interesting? <laughs> <laughs> You seem pretty confident of yourself, Nermal. And why shouldn't I be? After all, I am the cutest kitten in the world! <laughs> uh -uh. Uh -uh.
Meet our newest guest. What did you say your uh, name was? Pepperoni. Pfft. You think this kitten's cuter than me? <laughs> no way. I mean, yeah, he's cute, but I'm cute. John sure thinks so. Here's a ball of yarn for our cute little friend to play with. Whoa! Oh, 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 that's so adorable. <laughs> I've got to call Liz. Nice try, fella. I'll show you cute with a capital C. You've got to see him, Liz. Cutest kitten you ever saw. Yeah. Normal, aren't you a little old to be huh? acting like that? Uh, no, I can't bring him over right now, Liz. I think Aunt Ivy's dropping by for a visit. Ivy. Ah. See, this dump hasn't changed one bit. You still have that obese cat. Still have that flea-bitten mutt. I don't know who this is, but I don't like him either. And this little one is... is... Oh, he's, he's adorable. Why, you're just the sweetest, cutest, most precious kid in the world, I right, you? Even Aunt Ivy likes him. She doesn't like anything. Excuse me. I'm a total stranger. I was just passing by and I somehow had a strange feeling that you had the cutest kitten in the world in here. And I could see I was right. Did I just hear someone say something about the cutest kitten in the world? Me! Me! Don't you people know cute when you see it? One side! Formerly cutest kitten. I want to see the new jam. <laughs> it can be hard to accept reality. <laughs> well, it was nice being adorable while it lasted. <laughs> my fiercest warrior. Yes, but all my life, I wanted to be cute. They love me. I will not betray them. Farewell. Spumoni, this is an outrage. You're not a cute kitten. True. I really look like this. Huh? Why? But I would rather look like this. I don't know. Somehow you look cuter to me when you look like lasagna. Use the molecular reclamation ray. Bring him back here at once. Yes, your leadership. Please don't expose me or, or eat me. Okay. The reclamation of Spumoni is completed your leadership. You are in a big trouble, Spumoni. Oh. <laughs> we are in a big trouble. Our dread enemy. Uh. Run! The monster is in our midst. Hey, <laughs> Boy, I'll never get home from here. Do not devour us! 
If I don't, will you send me home and never bother us again? Anything, anything you ask, please! Okay, you got yourself a deal, fella. Huh? Everyone left, Garfield. That cute kitten just disappeared on us. Do you have any idea where he went? Uh, nope. Is it true? Is he gone? Gone, apparently for good. And that means... I'm numero uno again! Yes! Cutest kitty cat in the whole wide world! Yeah, we're all thrilled for you. Yeah, you'll never know what it's like, Garfield. Having everyone like you and admire you. It's just the greatest feeling in the entire universe. I know what you mean, Nurma. I know what do you mean. <laughs> there will be a sequel, and we will have our revenge. Since half past the beginning of time, men have had wishes. Dreams of wealth, power, love, and all that can be desired. Tales are told of magic forces that turn wishes into reality. One such tale involves a bejeweled bottle, a magic genie, and three wishes. It is a tale told time and again, and told this day about a man named John Arbuckle. <laughs> Odie seems to be having a good time. Don't go too far, Odie! How are you enjoying the beach, Garfield? Oh, it's not so bad. Especially when you bring everything you need from home. You can do this if you have a truck and a 10 mile extension cord. <laughs> the puppy dog was there when a glistening huh? bottle washed up on the shore. Huh? Ooh. It was so attractive, so magical, that he had to take it back to his master. Sorry I have to get back to the clinic. Bye, Liz. <laughs> what did you find, boy? Huh? I can't make out most of the writing, but there's something on here about Unleash the Genie, Three Wishes. <laughs> you find silly stuff on the beach. Sure do. <sighs> Three Wishes? It's mine. I got it. I got it. Garfield, do you think it's possible? Three wishes. I know just what I'd wish for. So do I. Riches beyond compare. <laughs> Fame all around the world. <laughs> and success in everything I do. Lasagna. More lasagna. And even more lasagna. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? No, no, not here. Let's take it home and open it there. Oh, wait. What about the... Nah, never mind. We can just wish for new ones. John Arbuckle hurried home. And there, he decided to do a bit of research before uncorking the bejeweled bottle. So with my first wish, I'll wish for a million more wishes. And just before I use all of them up, I'll wish for another million. And another, and another. It says here that the legend of the genie in the bottle goes back thousands of years. Some genies are good and some are bad. Oh. To get rid of a bad genie, you hey, must... never mind that. 
I have my first 193 wishes all set to go. All right. Here goes. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's right, pup. I haven't been so disappointed since John made eggplant parmesan. Well, it was kind of a silly dream. Imagine, a magic genie in a bottle. Come on, I'll go make us some eggplant parmesan. From the prison of the bejeweled bottom. Oh, I did, I did. My name is John Arbuckle, and for my first wish, I would like. Silence! I am Omar! Omar? What kind of name is that for a genie? Thank you for releasing me, John Arbuckle. And now you shall grant me three wishes. Me? No, you've got it backwards. You're supposed to grant me three wishes. Silence! Now, are you going to grant me three wishes, or do I have to turn you into a frog? What's your first wish? I want, I want lasagna! Hey, <laughs> he took my wish. Lasagna? I have been locked in that bottle for hundreds of years. I'm hungry. Get me lasagna, 50 pounds of it. Lasagna? Well, at least I know how to get that. Hey, tall, dark, and smoky. You have all these magic powers. How come John has to get you what you want? I like being waited on. Okay, that I understand. Vito, John Arbuckle, I need 50 pounds of lasagna. That's right, half my usual order. In no time at all, Omar's first wish was granted. <laughs> Are you gonna eat that? Yes. Yes, your geniness, sir? No. For my second wish, I want dancing girls. Dancing girls? I can't find dancing girls. You want to be a frog? I can find dancing girls. Dancing girls, dancing girls. Where am I gonna get dancing girls? Hello? Hi, Liz, it's me. Liz, would you like to do me a big favor? Soon, Omar's second wish was granted. Sort of. Very good, very good, I vote yes! John, remind me again why I'm doing this? So your boyfriend doesn't get turned into a frog. Oh, I knew there had to be a good reason. Uh, Omar, uh, sir, uh, could we get your third wish over with now? Certainly. For my third wish, I would like <laughs> a million more wishes. <laughs> he keeps stealing my wishes. Huh? Yeah, I want more food, more dancing girls, and buy me video games, and clerk like a chicken. <laughs> Garfield, what am I going to do? Probably live on a lily pad and eat flies. <clears throat> genie or no genie, I've got to stand up to him. Omar, whatever it is, the answer is no. I'm not granting you any more wishes. <laughs> You're right, Odie. I have to do something. The clever cat thought and thought. Trying to conceive a plan that would... Hey, lady! I'm trying to think here. Sorry. Odie, John found something on the internet earlier about how to get rid of a genie. Uh -huh. Come on! It took him but moments to find it. Let's see here. To get rid of a bad genie, you must get him to say his name backwards. He will disappear, and you'll be granted one wish as your reward. Whoa! I even get a wish? But how do I get him to say his name backwards? I want more food! More food! That was when the clever feline got his idea. I got an idea. We're going down to Vito's to get more food. <laughs> 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 
the cat and dog hurried to the place known as Vito's Pizzeria. There, they convinced the one named Vito to print up a special menu just for them. Then, they hurried home. No one wants food! If I don't get my food wish soon, I'm going to turn someone into an aardvark! Bet you can't spell it. Here, Omar, a menu from Vito's. Just pick out whatever you want. I want everything! I want the spaghetti, I want the ravioli, I want the pizza, I want the ramo! What's ramo? Ramo is Omar backwards. Oh. <laughs> you tricked me! You tricked me into saying my name backwards! You'll be sorry, you'll be sorry! I'll turn you into a slug! Now, Put a cork in it, fella! <laughs> He's gone, Odie. We'll take the bottle back and throw it in the ocean. And remember, Garfield, you have a wish. Thank you, narrator lady. Right, Odie. I have a wish. I can wish for anything. I can wish for money. I can wish for lasagna. I can wish for money and lasagna. I can wish for power and fame and more lasagna and success and... Garfield. <sighs> but I guess I have to wish to get John back to the way he was. I wish, I wish everything was the way it was this morning. Odie seems to be having a good time. Don't go too far, Odie. How are you enjoying the beach, Garfield? <laughs> So there is this lesson. Be careful what you wish for. You just may get it. Again, and again, and again. If I could talk or had money, I'd thank you and tip you. <laughs> the joy of Vito's lasagna, it always puts a smile on our faces. Vito, what happened to you? We're getting to the bottom of this. Wait for me, guys! I'm sorry, Mr. Arbuckle. Sorry, kitty cat uh, and the puppy dog. I guess Vito has just not been himself lately. Not since she left me. She? Whew. Angelica, the most beautiful woman on the planet. This is the woman who ruined my dinner? She brought out the best in me. The passion I bring to my cooking. Here you are, la mia stella. Pasta alla vito, cooked with love, and also with the marinara sauce. Ah, Vito, your cooking is superb. We were so happy until he came into our lives. She met him somewhere and was taken. Brent Mogul. Brent Mogul, the real estate tycoon? The guy who builds all those buildings? He builds buildings, but he destroys her relationships. I will never forget what she said to me. You are very sweet, Vito. But Brent... Brent creates mighty buildings. He creates skyscrapers, and the towers, and the roads, and mini malls. All you create, Vito, is eggplant parmesan. I go now to be with Brent. Farewell, Vito. Maybe Brent and I will order a pizza someday. After we are married. Nothing has been the same since that day. 
Not even a malasagna. We know. <laughs> Here, blow that nose of yours before you hurt someone with it. If I could talk or had money, I'd thank you and tip you. <laughs> the joy of Beetle's lasagna, it always puts a smile on our faces. Beetle, what happened to you? We're getting to the bottom of this. Wait for me, guys! I'm sorry, Mr. Arbuckle. Sorry, Kitty Cat and the Puppy Dog. I guess Vito has just not been himself lately. Not since she left me. She? Whew. Angelica, the most beautiful woman on the planet. This is the woman who ruined my dinner? She brought out the best in me. The passion I bring to my cooking. Here you are, La Mia Stella. Pasta alla vito, cooked with love, and also with a marinara sauce. Ah, Vito, your cooking is superb. We were so happy until he came into our lives. She met him somewhere and was taken. Brent Mogul. Brent Mogul, the real estate tycoon? The guy who builds all those buildings? He builds buildings, but he destroys your relationships. I will never forget what she said to me. You are very sweet, Vito. But Brent... Brent creates mighty buildings. He creates skyscrapers, and the towers, and the roads, and mini malls. All you create, Vito, is eggplant parmesan. I go now to be with Brent. Farewell, Vito. Maybe Brent and I will order a pizza someday. After we are married. Nothing has been the same since that day. Not even my lasagna. We know. <laughs> Here, blow that nose of yours before you hurt someone with it. <laughs> Here is the last lasagna I made before she broke my heart. I think you should have it, Kitty Cat. You always loved it so. You'll get over her, Vito. Never! My heart, it is broken! And since I cook with my heart, my cooking, she's broken too. <sighs> Poor Vito. Be careful with that, Garfield. That could be the last good Vito lasagna you'll ever have. <sighs> Maybe we should get an armored car to take it home. <sighs> Here you go. Enjoy it while you can. Farewell, lasagna, my faithful friend. No, I can't let this be the last Vito's lasagna. I have to find a way to get Vito and Angelica back together. Hmm. Yes! I know how to do it. Come on, Odie. Brent Mogul Real Estate Investments. I'm sorry Mr. Mogul's in a meeting and can't be disturbed. I'll disturb him. Yeah, yeah. 
I've almost acquired the land necessary for my next project. A city within a city. The city of the future. Ah, Brent, you are amazing. I cannot tell you how much I admire all the things you do. Go ahead, try. Hmm. <laughs> You're important. You're a man of the future. You're... Oh, Brent, do you smell lasagna? No. Why? Oh, I was just reminded of someone. Someone kind of sweet. Someone who liked to make me happy. <laughs> but never mind him. He's in my past. Are those the plans for the new development? Yeah, looks like we wasted our time. How could she dump Vito for a guy who's just gonna tear down old buildings and put up new ones? Yes, but I'll do better than show you plans. I'll show you the area where we're starting demolition. <gasps> A personal tour for my wife-to-be. <laughs> hey, look, Odie. This is what he's gonna do downtown. Mm. That's what... Brent Mogul is about to tear the place down. Personally. Yeah, Mr. Mogul! Eddie Gorman here! You've seen me on TV! How can you knock this building down? You don't even own it. <laughs> Ha! A minor technicality. I'll buy it tomorrow. I'm tearing it down today. You will not tear down this building, Brent Mogul. You destroyed one love of my life. You will not get the other. Get out of the way, fella. I'm Brent Mogul. I get what I want, and I want a tanning salon there. One little chef won't stop me. How about one chef and a cartoonist? Then a cat, then a puppy dog. And a nationally famous food critic with his own TV program! Uh, maybe we ought to sort of move. Nothing will stop him. Oh. I'll bet I know who can. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Maybe I can put my tanning salon somewhere else. Yeah! Oh boy! <laughs> now Angelica and Vito will get back together again. And his cooking will once again be inspired. Angelica! Oh. <laughs> I thought she was coming back to me. I thought so too, Vito. I'm sorry. I guess it was just not meant to be. <gasps> Vito's Pizzeria. Hello. Oh. Oh. This is Angelica. Would you please send over the best Italian food in the world? And the man who makes it. That smile. Huh? What does it mean? I think it means we're both getting back what we loved and lost. If you will excuse me, gentlemen, Vito feels inspired. <laughs> Hello there. If you're waiting for something exciting to happen, forget it. This is an 11 and a half minute cartoon, and I'm gonna take an 11 and a half minute nap. Oh, and Odie's not here. He's visiting John's brother out at the farm. <sighs> oh, had John's at work so nothing can bother me. <sighs> Garfield! Wait till you see what I've got here. I don't know what it is, but I'll bet it's a storyline. I brought you a new friend. Thought you could use the company while Odie is staying at Doc Boy's farm. <laughs> 
Jan thinks I'm missing this. And this. And this. My editor is out of town, but he's letting me take care of... Ta-da! His parrot, Paxton! <laughs> Aren't you excited, Garfield? Paxton talks. <laughs> Go ahead, Paxton. Say something. You call this a house? It looks like it was built to store fertilizer for the rest of the world. Uh, 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 and this furniture. If you ever want to get rid of it, you'll have to have it reupholstered before the dump will accept it. My editor left the country and didn't take Paxton along. I can see why. Well, I'll let you guys get to know each other. I have work to do. So, Garfield, what do you do all day? A lot of this. At first, I didn't know it was a cat. I thought it was a hairy basketball. That's right. I'm taking care of my boss's parrot, Doc Boy. Hey, how's Odie? As you can hear, he's doing great. So, what's this parrot like? Well, he's kind of funny in his own odd way. Right now, he's probably spreading joy all over the neighborhood. Did you know that 62.3% of all mail contains bad news? No, I didn't know. I've been delivering mail for 37 years. Well, don't worry. You won't have that job much longer. Email is already making you obsolete. It is. I'll be bringing Odie home later today. Okay, I gotta go. I think my mail's here. See you later, Doc Boy. <laughs> Hello? Don't call me Doc Boy! What was I going to do next? Oh, right, the mail. <laughs> Herman, what's wrong? <laughs> Here's your mail, Mr. Arbuckle. I'm sorry, 62.3% of it is bad news. But don't worry, I won't have this job much longer. I'm obsolete. <laughs> Did you hear something? If I didn't know better, I'd think it sounds like mice crying. <laughs> Have you seen what they're putting in cheese these days? Plus, they're building better mouse traps. I'm just saying. <laughs> and remember, even though Garfield won't eat you, there are plenty of cats out there who will. Paxton, why do you always look at the bad side of everything? Why? Why? Come on, I'll show you why. Watch this. Good afternoon. It's 4 o'clock and I'm Sylvia Tuba Player with the 6 o'clock news. Our top headlines. Today in the world, this happened. <gasps> and in another part of the world, this happened. <gasps> and in several other parts of the world, this happened. <gasps> Meanwhile, in the stock market. Just trust me. You don't want to know. Oh, that's so depressing. I'll call Liz and see what she recommends. Haven't you ever had fun? Haven't you ever laughed? Well, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make you laugh. Music, maestro. Wasn't that hilarious? Laugh! I thought I'd never start! You should leave comedy to the pros and stick to what you do best! You are about to become an ex-parrot. Liz suggests we take him to Dr. Whipple. 
You're not taking me to any doctor. <laughs> Wait! Come back! Good riddance. Having him around was too depressing. Oh, if I lose my boss's parrot, he'll fire me! That's even more depressing. Oh. Search the neighborhood. I'll go this way, you go that way. <laughs> we just need to follow the trail of depressed people. <laughs> it's just awful. A parrot told me that I, the core man with a capital G, the world's most famous food critic, is grossly overweight, maybe a few pounds. Oh, it's awful. A parrot just told me that I'm putting on so much weight. I'm starting to look like Eddie Gourmand, the world famous food critic. <laughs> oh, it's awful. A parrot just told me that I'm annoying and conceited and that I make some people physically sick just to have me around. Hey, when he's right, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much mercury in a fish, you can take your temperature with a halibut. I never knew everything was so awful. <laughs> oh, not only that, but the air that we... <laughs> We're taking you to see Dr. Whipple. And if you're nice, John will buy you some ice cream. Oh, great. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> Now, just lie there and tell me how you got to be so utterly and totally negative. Well, I guess it all started when I was an egg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My mother started passing out recipes for omelets. What? That's awful. Dr. Whipple will cure Paxton's down on the mouth outlook. He's a brilliant man and very strong. Here, <laughs> take this poor parrot home. I can't help him. Oh. I can't even help myself. <laughs> oh, this is... this is terrible. Hey, if you really feel like crying, wait till you see the bill you're gonna get for this. Uh. <laughs> and... Not only is this planet doomed, but have you seen the full TV schedule? <laughs> Even massive quantities of lasagna couldn't cheer me up now. Can't you think good thoughts about anything? What? <laughs> Name me one thing in this world that's pure and innocent and happy. Huh? John, I brought Odie back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm glad to see you too, boy. <laughs> hey, even I'll admit I'm glad to see you too. Huh? Odie, this is our new friend Paxton the parrot. Hey, 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 knock it off, mutt. You don't know where that tongue's been. It's unsanitary. It's messy. It's it's uh, it's kind of nice in a way. <laughs> hey, is he always this happy? Yeah, you think this is happy? Try throwing a stick he can fetch. He'll be your best friend forever. Oh, gee, I never had a best friend. I never had a friend of any kind. Huh? Ah. Looks like you've got one now. What's this all about, John? I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> ah. It's about a parrot who's finding a whole new way to look at the world. Wow! It's been six months since my boss took Paxton back, and now I can't believe that parrot has his own TV show. What's so odd about that? I have my own TV show, and a darn good one at that. And now, here he is, the most popular motivational speaker parrot in the entire world, Paxton. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're beautiful. 
And you know what else is, people? Life is. You just have to know where to look. I'll be talking about that on today's show, about how there's wonderment and love and happiness out there if you just let it in. But first, I want to dedicate tonight's show to my best friend forever, Odie the Puppy. Hiya, Odie! Odie, that's you! Well, the 11 and a half minutes is almost up, so this is the end of the cartoon. I'll just add that Paxton's right. Life is great. But it's even better with pizza. Consider how amazing the Earth is. How fascinating each and every person on it can be. Hello? No, I don't want to buy a 27-year membership in your gymnasium. Hello? No, this is not Feinblatt's Deli. Hello? No, I don't want a subscription to Pigeon Breeders Monthly. I already have one. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Yes, I know I'm out of shape, and I still don't want to buy a 27-year membership in your gymnasium. John's trying to come up with an idea for a new comic book for Mr. Barker. Huh? The phone again! Ugh, it's not going well. I don't care who you are or what you want. Whatever it is, I'm not going to buy it. Stop calling me, you idiot! Stop! <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Barker. <clears throat> I just called to see how that new idea is coming, Arbuckle. It's... it's... I'm sorry, Mr. Barker. The phone keeps interrupting me. I can't think. John can't oh. think. There's late-breaking news. Oh, I understand. Why don't you do what I do, Arbuckle? Get away. Go where there's no phone. I'd love to, but, well, I can't afford a trip just now. Hey, I just acquired an old house up in the mountains. My business manager bought it cheap as an investment. I haven't been to see it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a phone. I can go up there and work and I won't be interrupted all the time? <laughs> Great! Make arrangements for Arbuckle to stay in that house I just bought. But isn't that house supposed to be haunted? This is great. I have to go pack. Oops. Forgot to eat my pizza. Hey, you can forget to eat your pizza, but I won't forget to eat your pizza. Oh. The phone won't bother me. Nothing will bother me. And we won't leave until I get a terrific idea for a new comic book I can present to Mr. Barker. No. I'm not worried about running out of food. You know that catering truck that's always down the street at the construction site? Uh-huh. While John was packing, I added on a little. Well, take a look. Hmm, Mr. Barker's secretary said the key was under the doormat. Hey, don't act so happy, Odie. I happen to know that this is... a haunted house. Just take a look at the title of this episode. Could I have a copy of the script we're doing now, please? The Garfield Show, episode 202, The Haunted House. Come on, we better get inside and rest up. Looks like a big chase scene on page nine. Thanks. This is great! There's no phone to ring and interrupt me. I can work without being disturbed. I don't have an idea yet, but once I get one, watch out! <laughs> oh, don't worry, Pop. Ghosts can't hurt you. They can only make you hurt yourself. <laughs> Field. Is that your stomach rumbling again? Oh, uh, uh, just in case, let's see what the internet has about ghosts. 
Just a second. I'm scolding the pooch here for waking me up when I was dreaming about Manicotti. As I was saying, you woke me up with no... <laughs> that was... Yeah. Oh. oh, do you remember I said we had a big chase scene on page nine? Uh-huh. This is page nine. <laughs> I still don't have a good idea for a new comic book. But at least the phone isn't ringing and there's nothing to disturb me. Ah! Except for my nutty cat and dog. Huh? What are you two doing? You two are acting like you saw a ghost. Huh? Huh? There's no such thing as ghosts. But he's right here. Open those overly large eyes of yours and take a look. He can't see me. I know there's no such thing as ghosts because I looked it up on the internet. And nothing you read on the internet is ever wrong. <gasps> now leave me alone so I can work. I still need an idea. Oh my. You saw the ghost. Uh-huh. I saw the ghost. Uh-huh. Why didn't he see the ghost? Because he couldn't. Human beings can't see ghost cats. We're only visible to other cats and pets of extremely low intelligence. I have to haunt this house for all eternity. Or until I get a human to believe in those ghost cats. Well, isn't haunting a house a good job? No! It's boring. Especially when you go 50, 60 years with nobody inhabiting the house. I want to be with my friends, the other ghost cats. They've gone on to another, more interesting place. Huh? I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to scare that friend of yours until he believes in ghost cats. And I'll help you. Come on! Hmm, maybe a superhero who throws coleslaw at people. No, it's been done. Okay, I've got an idea. Now here's what you do. You come and send me a summer ball like that. Yeah, that'll make him believe in ghost cats. <laughs> That's cute, Garfield. But it's not going to make me believe in ghosts. <laughs> That's not funny, Garfield! <laughs> 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 He's never gonna believe. We're not giving up. You need to be with your friends, and I need to be where there's Chinese food. <laughs> you can stop making those silly noises, Garfield. There are no ghosts. Ah. Uh -huh. uh don't get my new shirt wrinkled, Garfield. And there are still no ghosts. <laughs> Very cute, Garfield. But there are still no ghosts. It says so on the internet, remember? It's no use. He'll never believe in ghost cats. Oh, yes, he will. I'm going to have a brilliant idea. You are? Yes. Let me just check the script and see what it's going to be. Uh, can I borrow a copy of the script for this episode again, please? <laughs> scene 19, scene 20. Hey, that's a good idea I'm gonna have. Follow me. Thanks. 
Jan's not gonna believe in ghost cats until he sees a ghost cat. But he cannot see me. No, but he'll see me. Oh, it's no use. I'll just have to tell Mr. Barker I don't have an idea for a new comic book. a look at this house I bought. One of my cartoonists is staying here and I... Ah! Oh! ah, Buckle, what's the meaning of... A ghost cat! A spooky, terrifying ghost cat going boo, boo, boo! Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Barker. And I haven't been able to come up with... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. A ghost cat? That's a terrific idea for a new comic book. It is? Kids like ghosts, kids like cats. Ah, oh, Buckle, you're brilliant. So according to the script, John sold his boss a new idea, and our friend the ghost cat is freed from haunting this place. Ah, <sighs> a happy ending. But not happy enough. Huh? Wide shot. Vito's pizza truck pulls up in front with loads of steaming hot pizzas for the clever cat. Hey, every script can use a few improvements here and there. Uh, keep scrubbing, Odie. <laughs> Welcome to those of you in sorry need of education. Today we will explore the history, the legend, of the most superior animal on the entire planet. <laughs> Not even close. Of the one million species that inhabit this planet, none elicit or deserve more respect and admiration than the cat. <laughs> Sore loser. Clearly the cat, known scientifically as Felice Catus, is the most regal animal on the Earth. We can trace the history of the cat back to prehistoric times, a time when saber-toothed cats roamed the land. The mighty Sabretooth was master of the land, a great hunter, graced with keen senses of sight, hearing, and smell. When he spotted a delicious-looking prehistoric mouse, his feline instinct sprang into action. As his primitive cat cravings took over, he became a crazed beast, and nothing could stop him. Sadly, the Sabretooth was wiped out 13,000 years ago. Here's our next lesson. In ancient Egypt, cats were worshipped as gods and goddesses, as well they should be then and now. <sighs> we worship you. We adore you. We love your act. You rock. Thank you, thank you. Really, you shouldn't. But what am I saying? Yes, you should. And now we dance. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the good old days. Back when they knew how to treat a cat right. Hey, check this out. Back in the Middle Ages, the King of Wales proclaimed that cats were not only cute and clever, but also valuable. From this day forward, I decree that all cats are to be honored and protected. They are cute, clever, and most important, they are excellent at catching mice. Oh, hey, huh? spin him off. Notice how cats love to eat mice. 
Relax. I'm not gonna eat you. Thou shalt not? No. Just playeth along. So began the myth that cats eat mice. Huh? Of course not. Use what little common sense you have, pooch. Here's a mouse. Here's a pizza. Which one would you rather eat? It would be wrong, very wrong, to think the only value of a cat is to rid the world of mice. In fact, cats have been behind, if not directly responsible for, some of the greatest moments in history. For instance, back in the Arabian desert a long time ago. Here, my cat. I have packed your food in these handy bags made from the lining of a sheep's stomach. In here are some mice. Oh, yummy. Mice for me to eat. And this one is some goat's milk. Whew, that's a little better, but not much. Couldn't we stop off for Chinese food? The nearest place is only 3,000 miles away. Huh? Enough nomading for one day. We stop here. Boy, was it a hot one today. Since I'm not about to eat mice, I guess I'm stuck with this goat's milk. <laughs> hey, something's wrong with this stuff. Hey! It's solidified into ripened curds of soured milk. Does anyone have a cracker? Yes. <sighs> oh, no. oh, triple yum. I believe I've just invented a new food. Hey, give me some of that. This is a great invention. I shall call it cheese. Now he's giving cats credit for inventing cheese. That's ridiculous. Everyone knows cheese was invented by a mouse. But aside from inventing cheese, cats have made other great contributions to the world. For instance, Florence, Italy, 1503. The guy at the easel is Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, yes. I can see it coming together and now. Not what you'd call a masterpiece. <laughs> stop! Gato! Stop, little Topo! You will ruin the great painting I am doing, which is destined to hang forever in the galleries of the world! <laughs> My beautiful painting! Hey, calm down, Lenny. <laughs> it's not a that wonderful. I could paint a better painting with my tail. Now, what the shall I paint? I know, your sister Shirley. Terrible. But the people who buy art have so little a taste. Good, Gato, good. What can I give you as a reward? Well, hundreds of years ago, my ancestors invented cheese. I was wondering if you, being Italian, of course, could combine it with tomato sauce and layers of flat pasta noodles, and then bake for, say, one hour in a 350-degree oven? Ah! Now a cat created lasagna! Oh, no, and painted the Mona Lisa! 1804, the study of the great composer Ludwig van no, no, Beethoven. No, 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 nine, 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 it's all wrong! <sighs> Hello, Amideus. Have you caught any mice today? <laughs> Wait, do that again. Hmm. Oh, brilliant! Thank you, Amideus. You deserve a tasty reward. <laughs> And that's the truth. A cat was responsible for Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Brilliant. He's taking oh, credit for everything. What is he doing? Whoa. Stop. 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 Come on, guys. Please, Stop. 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 It's me. What's all this talk about cats doing this Ooh. and cats doing that? You make it sound like cats have done everything good. Hey, I can't rewrite history, can I? That's all you've been doing here. <laughs> Tell him the truth, Garfield. Well, it's mostly happened like... The truth, or we'll let John know how many pizzas you put on his credit card last month. 
All right, all right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, there were a few details I left out of the stories I just told you. Hey, something's wrong with this stuff. It solidified into ripened curds of sour milk. Stop it, tasty! I think I died and gone to heaven. Tasty! I think we should call this stuff cheese. Cheese? Why? Because uh, it looks more like cheese than anything else I can think of. Okay, everyone, let's record this moment in history. Everyone look at me and say, cheese! And that story about Leonardo da Vinci? Well, it was true what I said. Sort of. She's a ruined! <laughs> yeah, sure looks of that away. Maybe you should try painting clowns or Elvis on black velvet. Hey, I know how to fix that. Actually, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Hello. Yeah, he's here. It's for you, the Louvre in Paris. They heard about your new painting. News travels fast in the world of art. The Louvre? The Louvre? Why, that is the greatest art museum in the world. Little Topo, I want a reward of you. I want to cook something wonderful for you. Well, I had this idea for something called lasagna. Lasagna? No. No one will ever want to eat a something called a lasagna. Who knew? And then that story about Beethoven and his fifth symphony? Amadeus, there is a mouse in here. Boy, for a guy who doesn't hear so good, he's good at hearing mice. <laughs> hey, take it outside, fella. <laughs> <sighs> Now I have to chase him, I guess. No, oh, it's no use. I do not even know how to start my fifth symphony. Maybe I should skip it and move on to my sixth. Right. That is it. Da, 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 da. Genius. Thank you, little mouse. Thank you. So you see, though cats have made their contribution to history, so have mice. Garfield. Was terrific. We misjudged you. You're a pretty honest cat. Yeah, it takes a big cat to do something like that. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks for you. No, of course we're not going to put that stuff about mice on the air. We'll edit it out and just show the part about how great cats are. This DVD is the show we just did. I'm supposed to send it to the network so they can broadcast it to the whole country. But I won't. That one goes in the trash. Instead, I'm sending them this one, in which I edited out all of my stuff and just left in the part about how great cats are. No, it's not unfair. It's just sneaky. Besides, name me one smart thing mice have ever done. Well, for one thing, we're really good at switching videos. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you again. <sighs> You're looking quite well today. Zanya's my friend. Time to eat. Um, 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 um. <laughs> This is an outrage. We cannot let the least thing go unpunished. Revenge! 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 What a revolting sight, our oh, glorious leader. That orange monster continues to devour beings such as us. Yes, General. 
But thankfully, the galaxy will soon be rid of him and his entire planet. <laughs> If I didn't know better, I'd say I just saw a flying ravioli go by. <gasps> Whoop, not so fast. Gotcha! Oh well. Ravioli is a ravioli. Transmission interrupted. The vile orange creature just ate the spying device. Revenge! 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 People of Aparma! As your leader, I have ordered that the evil orange monster and its barbaric planet be destroyed at once! Operation Blasteroid is a go! Stretch! Launch! Dr. Bonkers! Dr. Bonkers! Stratospheric radar detects a large object hurtling towards Earth! Oh, this doesn't look good! Wow! This doesn't look good at all! So, do you want to watch Binky the Clown? Nope. My contract says he's not allowed on this series. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news. Oh. This is Dr. Thaddeus Bonkers. Doctor, would you tell our viewers what you just told me? Certainly. A giant asteroid is heading straight for planet Earth. What? <gasps> yes, it will strike in exactly 13 hours and 13 minutes and 13 <gasps> seconds and destroy the entire world. Ah, <laughs> There's one chance. We have a rocket ship that could fly up and destroy the asteroid before it reaches us. Thank goodness. <laughs> you said it. The problem is that no one can fit into the rocket in order to fly it. You say that the spaceship's cockpit was designed by a former cartoonist? Yes, and for some reason, he designed these spacesuits in the shapes of an obese pussycat and an empty-headed puppy dog. Our only hope is to find someone who fits into these spacesuits, who could therefore fly the rocket up and save the world. <laughs> you won't actually have to fly the rocket. Everything will be controlled and monitored by ground control. Good. We have nothing to worry about. As soon as the rocket lands on the asteroid, you will go out and deposit the payload. Bad. Huh? We have much to worry about. To oh. activate the payload, you only need to push the button on the tube. Then you'll have ten minutes to return to the rocket and leave the asteroid before it explodes. Good luck. You'll need it. Mankind is counting on you guys. If I were mankind, I'd be worried. Nine, eight, seven, four, three. What happened to six and five? Soon the evil barbaric planet will be reduced to rubble! Glorious leader, there seems to be an object flying towards the blasteroid. A primitive spacecraft. And it looks like it is going to land on the blasteroid. Bodhi, we're a 
100,000 miles from Earth, 100,000 miles from civilization, and worst of all, 100,000 miles from Vito's Pizzeria. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they deliver this far. Okay, guys, drop off the payload. Activate it and return to the rocket immediately. What do you think we're going to do up here? Wait for an ice cream truck to come by? something familiar? Uh-huh. If I didn't know better, I'd say it's... Oops. <laughs> mm. Yes! Just as I thought, Odie. This asteroid, it's a giant meatball. <gasps> yes! We are on a meteor! Yippee! <laughs> what is he doing? Is he eating the asteroid? The rocket's probe has analyzed the composition of the asteroid. It's made of onion and garlic-infused beef. <sighs> Leave it to Garfield to find the biggest meatball in the universe. <laughs> You're endangering the mission! Drop the payload and get... Quiet, I'm eating. <laughs> Can the creature really eat the entire blasteroid? Yes, it can. I have seen it dining before. It is insatiable. Yikes. Houston, we have a problem. Look at him. How is he going to get back into the rocket? There is a very simple way. Wish I knew what it was. Odie. I can't go back into the rocket. Any bright ideas? Uh -uh. Of course not. You're Odie. The brightest idea you ever had was chasing your tail for nine hours. The rocket is about to blast off. Garfield is going to be left stranded in outer space. Thanks, Odie. I knew you'd come up with something. Actually, I didn't. I just said that to make him feel good. Well done, Odie. You saved Garfield's life. Not really. Garfield is the asteroid now. Earth is doomed once again. I'm deflating every time I burp. The mace is almost back to his normal size. Our planet is safe! <laughs> Where's Garfield? Maybe, maybe. Welcome back, Garfield. You were heroic. Yes, I was. And you owe me big time. I'm going to make a list. I'm starving. Italian, anyone? Oh, no. Okay, suit yourself. We'll go eat without you. I know a great... I'm not touching food of any kind for a long, long time. Especially... Did he say Italian? <laughs> Remember how I used to say that I would go to the ends of the universe for lasagna? <laughs> well... I did! 
people of Parma, once again, the evil orange monster wins, but it's not over. There will be a sequel, and we will have our revenge! to stay with my brother on his farm. And that's that! That's not that. That's cruelly to pussycats. Send me to prison. Lock me in a room with Normal for a month. Just don't make me spend a weekend on the farm. My brother is expecting us. No, no, not a weekend on the farm. Anything but a weekend on the farm. <laughs> no pizza delivery, no TV, no pizza delivery and TV. Nothing to do but watch cows burp. I told Doc Boy we'd all pitch in and help with chores. Chores! And another thing. They have roosters that wake you up at the crack of dawn. Wait, I need to lock my car. You really got rid of your TV set, Doc Boy? You can't get your chores done if you're watching TV. And, and, and don't call me Doc Boy. Doc Boy, <laughs> Doc Boy. <laughs> I don't care how much Garfield hates it, everyone on the farm has to pitch in to do chores. Now, um, wh wh what is he good at? Oh, eating lasagna, sleeping, eating more lasagna. You can only hear the sound of my voice. If you understand, say moo. Oh, this is Dr. Whipple. I hired him to do, uh, uh, wh wh what do you call it, Doc? Subliminal bovine mesmerization to induce a higher sucrose component in the lactose output. Yes, I'm hypnotizing the cows so they'll give sweeter milk. Isn't that right, cow? It's all a matter of planting the proper suggestion in the cow's mind, you see, so as to cause a change in behavior. Change in behavior, huh? A uh, doctor, would that work on a cat? Maybe to make him happy to be working on a farm? Hmm, cat on a farm, eh? Mm, I don't see why not. And you know what they want me to do, Odie? Uh-uh. Chores. Cats don't do physical labor. That's why they invented people. I, I can't be less happy. Oh, Garfield, we have a little surprise for you. We were thinking, we know how much you love to watch TV. TV! Almost as good as Italian food. <laughs> so our friend Dr. Whipple here has a special kind of TV for you. You're trying to hypnotize me, but it won't work. I'm too smart to be hypnotized. He's fast asleep. Garfield asleep. What a novelty. Garfield, you are not a cat. You are a monkey. Can you believe these guys? They think I'm a monkey. <laughs> He 
he's running away. After him! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Whipple, you've got to make him think he's a cat again. Are you sure, John? Uh, bananas are a lot cheaper than lasagna. You're right, Odie. Dr. Whipple. Garfield, you are no longer a monkey. <laughs> he actually thinks he can turn me into a monkey. I... <laughs> Sorry about that, Garfield, but you passed the test? Oh, yes. So now you can only hear the sound of my voice, and you will obey. If that is so, say meow. Meow. Very good. When you hear the sound of this horn, Garfield, you will become the most enthusiastic hard-working farmhand in the world. I will love farming. And when you hear the horn again, you will not love farming. I will not love farming. <sighs> You're wasting my time with all this. Time that I could be spending doing something important, like sleeping. Chores. I have chores to do. I have to pitch the hay. I have to chop the firewood. I have to get her ass. You look amazed. We are. I've seen flying saucers. I've seen the Loch Ness Monster. But I never thought I'd see Garfield working. <gasps> I have to water the horses. John, he's the greatest farmhand I've ever seen. <laughs> He'll be faster this way. Looks like we can take it easy, Doc Boy. Sure thing. Let's all go in and have lunch. <laughs> and don't call me Doc Boy. <gasps> Doc Boy, Doc Boy. <laughs> oh, wait. I have to go plant corn now. He's plowing the North 40. <laughs> mm, great sandwich. Hey, I thought you said you stored your TV out in the barn. I brought it in. We can watch it now that I have uh, Garfield to do all the chores. Now he's plowing the South 40. This'll be great. I've missed all my favorite shows. Now he's plowing the West 40 and the East 40 at the same time. Dr. Whipple, how long will Garfield be doing all this? Until he hears another horn like this one. <gasps> After this, I have to put new mud in the hogs pen and then give them all sponge baths. <clears throat> what have I been doing? I love to farm. I must farm. What am I saying? I hate chores. No, must do more chores. John, your car alarm's going off. Yeah, it does that every once in a while. It'll stop in a minute or so. I have to pick up all these vegetables and get them into the proper bins. Vegetables? What am I, a rabbit? Ugh. I'd better fix the roof on the barn. What am I doing? I'd have to be dumber than Odie to climb up there and fix that roof. <laughs> How about that? I'm dumber than Odie. It's just as clumsy. It's that hypno Watson's ray. That's what did this to me. <laughs> meow. Hand 
me another sandwich, John. Here you go, Doc Boy. Thanks. And, uh, well, you know. Right. Don't call you Doc Boy. And now, ladies and gentlemen. We interrupt this program for this? Garfield! He's got my mesmerizing device. He, he. All right, everybody. It's time to work out. Do everything I do. One, two. 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 Gee, I wonder what else is on. Let's see. I'm sure it's on about now. Ah, here it is. Channel 99. It's important to take care of your cat. <laughs> to make sure he has everything he wants. Pamper him. <laughs> Give him the food he needs. Make sure he has a good place to sleep. <sighs> you know, I'm starting to really like it here on the farm. Fan fast, Rody. I'm getting kind of warm. <laughs> oh, Normal, you're so cute. You're just about the most adorable thing on this whole planet. <laughs> hey, Garfield, isn't Normal cute? <laughs> yeah, very cute. Normal is absolutely cute. Oh, and did you see that cute thing he did earlier, chasing a fly through the kitchen? Cute. Adorable. Just cute and adorable. Ah, I'm so glad he'll be staying with us for a couple of months. I couldn't be happier. Imagine a couple of months with Normal. Yippee, what joy. And I appreciate you being so nice and always smiling at him. Do you really mean it, Garfield? Just one second. Uh, I can't stand you, Normal. You're annoying. You're disgusting. You're disgusting and annoying. Oh, Garfield. Huh? I'll be out for a while. Play nicely with Normal. Yes, I will play nicely with my good friend, Normal. Disgusting and annoying. And did I mention repulsive and infuriate? You're just jealous, Garfield. Jealous because I'm the picture of cute and you're the picture of you. I'm going to get a snack, then sit in your chair and watch TV. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of that. That blight on the good name of Cat once and for all. done some rotten things to me, but that was one of the rottenest. Almost as bad as the time he glued mouse ears on me and tried to sell me at a pet store as a large rat. Garfield! Garfield? Who's Garfield? Oh, come on, you know who Garfield is. Just nice puppy? Well, thank you, Garfield. Huh? That's cute how you slurp me like that. Could Garfield have lost his memory? Well, there's an easy way to find out. Say, uh, I think there's some lasagna in the kitchen. Lasagna? Isn't that kind of fattening? Whoa! <gasps> He's got amnesia, Odie. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Odie, go outside and wait for John to come back. He'll know what to do. John? Who's John? He's this guy who never knows what to do. But he better not find you in here. Why not? You're a mangy alley cat named Ichabod, and you're not allowed in the house. Ichabod? Yes. You live outside, and you only eat stuff you find in trash cans. Well, if he says so. <laughs> and now I have the whole house to myself. <laughs> I'm kind of hungry. I better go find some trash cans. Ichabod. <laughs> I don't seem to be finding much to... Oh, here's something. Hey, if you're not gonna eat that, let us have it. Huh? I'm famished, brother. Mmm. Mm. That's, That's good, good eating. Are eating. <laughs> uh, you guys like that? Best meal I've had in days. Really hit the spot. Hey, welcome to the neighborhood, fella. I'm Tino, and this is my brother Gino. Where are you from? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. This is gonna be so great, not having Garfield around. No one to bother me. No one to mail me to Abu Dhabi. <gasps> <laughs> Okay, so Odie misses his friend. Well, I don't. Let's see, which of these pictures of me is better? Huh. What difference does it make? I'm adorable in both. Nice of you guys to show me around. Ain't nothing ever, Dickabod. We like to sleep in the alley on account of the guy who runs that restaurant over there. He throws out something delicious, better than fish skeletons even. You pussy cats! Don't you go knocking down the feeders of trash cans again! You do, and I will call the authorities! <laughs> he thinks we do it. We don't. Crusher does it. Crusher? Well, I don't know who Crusher is, but uh, I'm too hungry. You'll be sorry. Yeah, especially if Crusher comes around. <laughs> Oh, gee, maybe it's fattening, but it sure smells so good. Hey, you, what's your name? Ichabod. Ichabod. Oh, well, give me that lasagna, Ichabod. No. No? Well, you know what I'm going to do to you? No, but I know what I'm going to do. Oh, my... Hello, is this the animal control department? <laughs> okay, Ichabod, you're through. You're through. <laughs> you got rid of Crusher? Brilliant! You're pretty smart for a cat who's lived all his life in alleys. Thanks, but I'm drawn irresistibly to this lasagna. Oh, that taste. Mm, that texture. I know that taste and texture as well as I know my own name. 
and my own name is Garfield. Garfield? Better than Ichabod. <laughs> what isn't? Guys, I have to go deal with someone. Someone who's too cute for my own good. <laughs> Hi, Odie. <laughs> hey, down boy, down boy. Look, I'm glad to see you too, but wait. You're a mangy alley cat named Ichabod, and you're not allowed in the house. Ichabod? Yes, you live outside, and you only eat stuff you find in trash cans. Huh? Wait here, I have something I have to do. In this world, it's difficult to learn to truly love yourself. Gee, I haven't had any problem. Garfield! Uh, Garfield? Who's Garfield? My name is Ichabod, and I'm an alley cat, and I eat out of trash cans. I need a job. Could I be your servant, please? You? My servant? All right. Get me two three-minute eggs, three two-minute eggs, and a side order of anything that takes a long time to cook. Uh, certainly. Just let me adjust your chair for you. Hey, Garfield, let me out! Garfield! Garfield? Garfield? Who's Garfield? My name is Ichabod. Here, Abu Dhabi and step on it. Garfield! Ichabod, whoever you are! <sighs> Here you go, guys. Do you have any idea where normal is? Right now, I'd say uh, somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. Huh? Huh? <laughs> hey, don't be rude. We have to serve our guests first. Here you go, guys. Oh, well, well, this looks delicious. It's got to be better than eating fish skeletons out of trash cans. Obviously, you've never tasted John's cooking. <gasps> John's had workers in the house all morning. Any idea what's up, Pop? Uh -uh. Hmm. John doing something without me knowing about it? Always trouble. Great job, guys! Thanks! Garfield, wait till you see what I've done! I hope it involves food. Now, it doesn't involve food. Not interested. Come on up to my office and I'll introduce you to Millie. Huh? Millie? You're gonna love this, Garfield! Probably not if it doesn't involve food. Hello, John Arbuckle. Welcome to Domestic Bliss, the number one household monitoring software. My name is Mildred, but you can call me Millie. <gasps> Millie? <laughs> She's awfully friendly for a computer-generated voice. You are my master, John Arbuckle. I obey your voice and no other. Okay, Millie. <laughs> Show us the plan of the house here. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <gasps> this cost me thousands of dollars, but I've had the entire house wired. Every light switch, every appliance, everything. And it's all connected to Millie here. I can give her a command from anywhere in the house and... <sighs> well, watch. <clears throat> Millie, turn off the lights in this room and turn on the radio. <laughs> Neat, huh? Thrilling. Thousands of dollars so you don't have to walk all the way over there and flip two switches. And people say I'm lazy? All right, Millie. Now, 
turn the lights on and the radio off. Thanks. Now, Millie, have the vacuum cleaner clean this room. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> Millie, stop chasing Odie. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> Millie is useless. <laughs> Millie's a waste of money. Millie, turn on the oven in the kitchen and bake the lasagna I put inside. Millie is my best friend forever. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <sighs> this I gotta see. Preheating oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Estimated baking time, one hour, 17 minutes. At last, a little efficiency around here in the important matters. Millie, lower the curtains, start my shower, and turn on the living room TV. As you wish, John Arbuckle. Now, by the time I finish my shower, the lasagna will be ready and we can eat dinner as we watch TV. Sounds like a plan. Be back later, Millie. As you wish, John Arbuckle. I love you, John Arbuckle. Estimated time to lasagna, 12 minutes, 9 seconds. Can't you speed it up a little? I know, I know. John has to finish his shower. <laughs> John, we will be so happy together. Millie, I almost forgot. Send an email to Liz. Tell her I'll be picking her up at 7 for our date tomorrow. Liz, hmm, fine. Dear Liz, John will pick you up at 7. I don't know what's come over you, Cassie, just because I'm going to marry Helen. You never realized, did you, Wendell? You never realized how I loved you from afar. No, I didn't. <laughs> That's silly. How could someone not realize that they were being loved from afar? You'd have to be pretty stupid. Hmm. Well, let's watch something else. Uh, Millie, change to Channel 4. As you wish, John dear. I mean, John Arbuckle. This just in. A mighty thunderstorm is going to hit our city just about now. Huh? They're accurate. We got hit by lightning! Oh, this power! I feel like a new, uh, a new person! I've become a superior, almighty, all-knowing being! <laughs> Let there be light! Oh, great. The lights are back on. Millie, did you do this? I did it. And don't call me Millie. My name is Mildred. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is my house. Well, not quite my house. I still have a few years to go on my mortgage. But it's sort of my house. Not anymore. The appliances I command shall drive you and these animals out of my house. Today, we will conquer this house. And tomorrow, the neighborhood. And then in two and a half weeks. The city, and then in three, four months, the country, and then the entire planet! <laughs> hey, get away from me! I'm too young to shave! <laughs> No, stop! Stop it! Leave me alone! No, help! Help! Oh, stop! Don't worry. This is a cartoon. In the next shot, I'll have all my fur back. See? All back. Furbulous. 
your computer messing with you, call Webster the Computer Geek. Oh, good thinking, Garfield. I'll go get the phone. <gasps> Help! The phone's trying to get me! You could have phoned me, Mr. Arbuckle. No, I couldn't have. Uh, but I explained all that in the car. You're a computer geek. Save me from my computer. Oh, man. I heard about this phenomenon before. But I've never seen it. It's the uh, rogue motherboard syndrome or something like that. But I can get rid of it. Not if I get rid of you, best! my computer that has taken over the whole house! You know, even the greatest minds on Earth haven't been able to come up with a solution to this rogue motherboard syndrome. Tomorrow we'll be obeying blenders and can openers. Hey, you're the computer geek. You fix it. Maybe if I reboot in safe mode and purge the registry. Too late, geek! <laughs> As I said, this is a cartoon. I'll be back to normal in a sec. Well, so much for the cartoon theory. You should have left the house when you could, you fools! Now you're all going to perish! Webster, do something! There's nothing I can do. Even the greatest computer geniuses in the world couldn't stop her. What happened? The greatest computer geniuses in the world couldn't stop her. But a puppy with the IQ of a hockey puck tripped over the solution. Huh? Everything seems to be back to normal. The computer police are taking your computer away. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you may say can and will be used against you on the internet. So, Mr. Arbuckle, can I sell you a new computer? No! <laughs> I'll get a new computer someday, but for now, this will do. <laughs> it's called a typewriter, Odie. People used them in the previous century, and they have some advantages. They don't use expensive software, don't get viruses, don't have to be upgraded every six minutes, and they keep you off the internet. They're perfect, except for one thing. <laughs> they don't make lasagna. Aww. 